All right, you're tuned into MMA Canada and very excited to be talking to an individual who is set to be competing at CFFC 137, which goes down on October the 18th. And a very intriguing lightweight matchup set to go down as Robert Vericchio takes on Alexander Martinez and great heaven Alexander on the MMA Canada platform today. How are you doing, man? You having a solid day? Yeah, I'm having a great day, you know. Uh, we're just a bit over a week now, I think 10 days till fight day. So enjoying the ups and downs of the sport, the the good and the bad. And to be honest, it's the best thing ever. So I'm pretty excited to get going with it. Yeah, and obviously you're you know diligently working in the gym, so there's not like a complete separation from the sport, obviously, but just with it being a bit over a year, being outside the cage and returning after you know a lengthy enough tenure in the PFL, like I imagine there's a certain excitement to I guess showcase to the fans and the body of like a competition, just what your skills are and how you've you know made your improvements and everything since we last saw you. Absolutely, I mean. Um, I changed places again, you know, like I've been uh, evolving a lot as a fighter. Uh, since the PFL, I've been pretty much moving all over the place, trying to figure it out where I fit in the best. And uh, now I found myself in TriStar, where i always been going to since the beginning of time. And it's been, to be honest, amazing to be part of that team. Uh, Fira Sahabi brings such a different mindset into the sport that I just seem to enjoy and to fall into place the best. But as well, you know, it came down to just life livelihood for me. I was like, uh, I, you know, I have a daughter now, I have a family and uh, being in Canada is the best decision for me. So since then I moved to Tricer full time and I competed under the banner of Tricer twice, but it was a bit of a rush being in the PFL in 2023 because it was just like a quick transition for me to go into like a, a, a whole new him and then right away getting big fights so i didn't really get to showcase very much what i was learning as it was a very like a quick turnaround from just moving from one city to another uh it was a big move a big move in that team as well brand new team to get used to and um you know just to get to compete in a big platform i just didn't get to quite show off what i really wanted to show off and then now being over a year since I competed, I'm really excited to go ahead and show off that, okay, you know, this is what we've been working since I moved and uh, just getting things down padded. I mean, a lot of people say there is something, such a such a thing as a ring rust. I don't believe in it, to be honest. I think it's, um, what's it called? It's a mental thing. It's a psychological thing. I haven't been out of the game since I left uh, uh, the cage last time in June. I've been training full time uh, in and out of the gym twice a day, every single day. So for me, I don't think there is such a thing as a rain rush, but, you know, at the same time, I've been working on the psychological part of it just in case it might show. But at the same time, I don't think it will because I, for me, it feels like I just fought, to be honest, last week. Like I can still recall the moment when I was walking into the PFL cage. I can still recall the moment when I was uh, facing Bruno Miranda so for me, it feels like it was just last week that I fought. So it's uh, one of those things that I keep on reliving in my head to not uh, forget the feeling of what fighting feels like. So I'm pretty excited to get in there. Yeah, and I mean, I feel like I have a few questions related, I guess, just to the journey, like in the sense of kind of just what got you here in a sense, just with this CFFC fight. And I guess like the first you know, question I have within that cluster of, I guess, inquiries that I have just... What even happened with the PFL? Like, was it just as simple as you fought out your contract and then they just elected to not re-sign it? Or were you wanting to pursue outside options? I guess, like, what unfolded there to where you're no longer in the PFL fold as of now? Well, it was a combination of a lot of things. Uh, I already knew going to the 2023 that uh, the PFL was going to be a tough goal. So as you can see, you know, the the tournament is really tough. I did it two times in a row. And then going to the 2023, I said to myself, maybe it's time for me just to take a step back and, uh, you know, regroup myself. But contracts in the line, you know, I cannot go out and compete anywhere else. So I had to make sure to finish the contract off. Uh, of course, I wanted to end up in a good note. But at the same time, you know, things play out the way they did. Um, you know, fought well. Things went 
decently well. I mean, they lost, but at the same time, they were pretty close matchups, you know, great fights. Um, so that was one part of it. My contract ended, and then it came down to the decision now whether I wanted to resign with the PFL or not. And resigning with the PFL means going back into the tournament season, which is a great opportunity. But at the time, for me, I just thought that I needed a little more of a, what's it called? Uh, I needed to grow a little more to go back into the PFL just because every single match that I was going to I was gonna get, it was going to be a high-level matchup. I knew it was not going to be um, a favorable matchup anymore. Uh, well, there is never really such a thing as a favorable matchup because we both are fighting for something big. But at the same time, you know, just a lot of experienced veterans. And when that happened at the time, I got the option to either resign with the PFL or take a step back and reconstruct myself. So I said, okay, I'm still young. Uh, at the time, I was only 29. And then this year, I turned 30. So at the time, I said, okay, I still have quite a few good years in me. I'm still quite healthy. I never really took any big damages. My brain is doing well. My body is doing well. No big injuries, nothing. So I said, okay, I still have a long time in the sport that I can, I can do really good with it. So I could either... Keep going with the PFL and keep grinding my body because we're really throwing our body to the grinder. I mean, we got to make weight uh, every two months. So every eight weeks, we got to be 155. And for me, a 155 cut is not quite of an easy cut, um, at least to the point where I can do it often. You know, I need to maintain a very low, uh, to be honest, there is no life to it. And you know, when you're in the tournament, you have to make 155 every eight weeks till you make it to the finals. But at the same time, just to make it to the finals, you have to go through those tough weight cuts, back-to-back uh, -back fights. And I just thought at the moment for myself, it was going to take a lot of years out of me for my career. So my coach and I decided, okay, it's probably better for us just to take one step back and regroup ourselves, get some more experience, and then go back into the big show. And now, of course, our goal is 100% the UFC. Oh, that's interesting. So the focus, I guess the impression that I was even kind of getting there was like, I don't know, maybe you would potentially entertain another go in the PFL, but the primary focus would be to get to the UFC from here on out. Well, it, we could go back to the PFL as well, right? But I mean, right now at the moment, um, just how things are going, I think, and I would love to uh, go for the UFC. At the moment, uh, the way that things are going, the way that things are looking, and just how the how much uh, of a go the UFC is getting, in my heart, I feel like I would like to give my go in the UFC. You know, everybody get everybody wants to have that try into the into the big show. I mean, P, don't get me wrong, PFL is a big show as well, but at the same time, it's one of those things that uh, as a fighter, you grow up watching the UFC and you want to make it to the UFC. The PFL is one of those things where it just came. Not too long ago, so it's it's a great opportunity for fighters. Don't get me wrong, but at the same time, you know, it's one of those things that I just want to accomplish. Is say, okay, I was in the UFC, I've done it, and I also don't just want to go in the UFC, but I want to stay in the UFC for a while. Um, but now nobody knows what the future will tell. Uh, two, three fights from now, maybe I get a good contract from the PFL offer again, and it's something that uh, entices me to go back into it. I'll definitely take it. It all depends on what is offered at the moment that I'm, you know, in the future. Like I said, right now it's hard to decide what I will do because it all comes down to what they offer and at the moment of my career. So right now the goal is the UFC, but at the same time, my focus is on next week. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, definitely not overlooking your opponent, Robert Verricchio, but just kind Absolutely. of an interesting sort of like thing to consider for sure I, and i just wanted to make sure i kind of i guess had the correct idea of what you were saying like yeah I do, I do hear what you're saying at the end of the day man i guess the idea is that it's just good to have options and it seems like you very much do have that i guess like another question that i had though that i don't feel like has been i guess addressed publicly from what i've seen at least but i had seen circa february that unified mma had announced that you were part of a deal and that they could expect you in the unified cage somewhat soon. And just with you fighting for CFFC here, I'm kind of curious, like, do you, I guess, like have a one fight 
deal with CFFC and then you're going to fight with Unified thereafter? Or like, what's the deal with that as of now, I suppose? Um, the deal was, uh, you know, I get to get fights with the Unified. So we were supposed to, you know, find fights within the Canadian region. But then things just start to get a little bit tough to, to find the proper fights. I mean, like you said, me being away from the cage hasn't been something that I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to be in the cage a lot sooner than what things have happened, how things have happened. But at the same time, you know, it's hard coming from such a big stage. It's really hard to find the next opponent. You know, it's hard to find the, the opponent that will propel you to the next one. You know, everybody, of course, wants to get a piece of the pie. But at the same time, they don't bring much to the table. So it's not like I would come and just fight somebody who is on a losing streak or somebody who, um, how do you say, uh, just wants to take uh, a name. You know, it's it's very important the way that you you plan to to get back into the fighting once you come out of such a big stage because the goal is to go back into the big stage. You know, the goal is not to stay around and just fight as many times as you want. You want to prolong your career. So for me, as soon as I came out of the PFL, I was like, okay, well, I would like to fight regional as soon as possible. And I would like to stay within the country, you know, fighting in Canada if possible, because that's where my people are and I can bring a lot of sponsorship and views and such things. But at the same time, things were just not giving in. Um, opponents keep falling through. Then uh, there was a lot of things where they were keep telling me, okay, we're fighting this guy. And then the weight starts to rate, you know, go up and higher and higher. And it's kind of like, hey, guys, I'm a 55er. You know, let's let's stick to 55. I want to stay at 55 and I want to fight at 55. And then, you know, it's all, almost like all of a sudden things start to become a little bit more of a gamble. And um, like I said, our goal is professional. We want to go at the 155, make at the highest level when it comes down to 155. And um, things were just not given. The opponents were not showing. Um just because of the regional circuit. So we start expanding our, uh, what's it called? We start expanding our radar. We start seeing in other places, uh, UAE warriors. And don't get me wrong, I'm still open to fight for Unify. It all just comes down to when, where, and who. We were supposed to fight for their car in September, but that got in Edmonton, and that got canceled and got postponed to November. I told them, hey guys, you know, I would like to fight as soon as possible. I've been preparing myself for September. That didn't go through. Now it got moved to November. And then uh, the first thing that came through was uh, this fight in October. Actually, there was a few more other cards. Like I said, I've been on the on the short listing for so many cards that uh, I've just been waiting for a fight. And then finally, CFFC came in and said, hey, we got a guy that he wants to fight. He's ready to fight. Uh, what do you guys say? And we say, let's do it. You know, we've been waiting for a while. So it's just one of those things that I've been waiting for a fight for such a long time that uh, I'm taking whatever it comes. So that's really what it's been all about. And it's interesting because ultimately on the 18th, you're going to get out there with Robert Barriccio and you guys are going to fight. But is there almost like a sense of camaraderie just being that this is like a locked in, committed opponent in the context of you having that recent history of you know, fights falling out and then not being able to, I guess, lock in fights with the kind of opponents where there would be, I guess, commensurate benefit for both fighters involved. Like, is there a certain bond that gets established with fighters like that? Because it did seem like you were wanting to, you know, as you said, get back out there and kind of hit the regional circuit and rack up some wins and then get to like a bigger stage thereafter. So is there a certain, I guess, I guess, bond or maybe camaraderie is not the right word, but is there a certain appreciation for just even Robert Vericchio signing that contract and you having like a locked in date and committed opponent and all? Well, you know, there is always appreciation of uh, every single opponent that comes in because, um, you know, it takes a lot of guts just to step in the cage. But at the same time, you know, um, that appreciation is not there yet. You know, I still have to go and lock horns with him. So, but I am definitely thankful that uh, he's taking the fight and that he's coming to fight. Uh, just like I've been thankful with every single one of my opponents before, and I'll always keep being thankful for them because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. You know, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't go anywhere. I wouldn't test myself out. So for me, to be honest, uh, Robert Varicho is like, um, um, the way that I see him, it's not so much of a, it, for me, it's not personal. So I don't see him such as, uh, uh, I'm, 
I'm not going to give props to him, nor I'm going to also put him down. For me, I see him as a challenge because the challenge is really within myself. That's how I see fighting. It's not so much that I'm going to go and fight against Robert Barriccio, but it's gonna, I'm fighting against myself all the way till the fight. And then once the fight goes off, you know, goes through, then I'm, of course, you know, I treat uh, my opponent like, uh, like a human being. But before that, I cannot see him as a human being. For me, he's a challenge. Um, but that being said, you know, I'm always thankful for my opponents. So if your question, if your question comes down to if I'm thankful for him stepping up, absolutely, I'm thankful for him stepping up. Just like I will be thankful with everybody else. But at the same time, you know, like my eyes are targeted on him. You know, for me, this is a challenge I have to overcome. So the thanks comes right after. I have to go finish my job, and then I'm like, okay, thank you. But up to now. For me, this is a challenge, a goal. So I have to go and achieve it. <laughs> I don't know if you understand what I mean. Just a mindset. I'm trying yeah. not to see my opponents such as uh, something to be very thankful of, appreciation, because I don't want to put them in a pedestal. I want to keep them down and keep my head level, uh, keep my level headed to go and accomplish the goal. Yeah, no, well said, man. I totally hear where you're coming from, and I guess just in how you're kind of observing your opponent at this juncture. Like, what are your thoughts on what they bring to the table? Because, I mean, quite a impressive run so far relative to, you know, what they've done. Like, they've had the, you know, six pro fights, but even within that, all of those being finishes with the vast majority of them ending in the first round and has had a few fights under the CFFC banner at this point. Like, what are your thoughts on, I guess, the, I guess, skill set that Robert brings to the table from what you may have seen? Or are you more kind of allocating the tape study to your coaches and kind of focusing on what you can do best in the fight, I guess? Uh, I'm doing both at the same time. I am, you know, I do watch over my opponents, make sure I study them uh, step by step. But also, I don't put too much time into it as well. Otherwise, you start seeing your opponents as a grandiose uh, view, point of view. But I do watch their technique. I do watch how they apply. But I also do watch what their opponents do and, you know, try to to depict what they both do at the same time. You know, I see what my opponent is doing and I'm seeing how their their opponents are reacting. So their rivals at the time are reacting just to see if it's a proper reaction that they're doing or is it more of a fear or lack of experience and such a things. And um, so when I'm watching these tapes, I'm not just thinking of what my opponent is doing. I'm also thinking of what the other guy is doing because we can all look really good against somebody who is not as good. You know, like um, we all seen it. We've seen guys look great and then they hit the, the stage, the high stage, they're going to the UFC, they're going to... PFL, Bellator, or whichever is a high stage. And all of a sudden, they're not doing as well. And you're wondering, how come this guy doesn't do as good? Well, this guy hasn't been tested. You know, they've been fighting against uh, unexperienced opponents. Um, you know, it's not hard to finish somebody who is an experience. Like, I mean, no, no disrespect to anybody, but uh, an untrained opponent versus a trained opponent is very, very different fight. But now have two trained fighters and get them go at it. And let's see what happens. And now have two trained fighters, one with a lot more experience than the other. Now let's see what happens. You, if you know what I mean, you know, it's um, it's one of those things. When I watch the fights, I don't just watch my opponent is doing. I also watch what the other guy is doing. So when I'm studying these tapes, I study absolutely everything, how they move, how they eat. Uh, I go and, and watch as much as I can from them. And then I let it be. I take notes. And then now it's up to my coaches to guide me through the camp. But then after a bit, I don't. Uh, I try to not go and touch it anymore. I like I say, I take all the details that I can as soon as the camp starts, and then I watch it once or twice throughout the camp just to make sure, and that's it. And then after that, it's up to my coaches, and then I just have to show up and perform on my skills. Yeah, it's interesting, and I mean, I guess maybe I'm kind of just tying it into some of the performances, but I guess just you talking about the whole thing of like, if you almost look at what your opponent's good at too much, like there's that fine balance where it's like, you want to be familiar with what they bring to the table, but you don't want to be like Absolutely. mesmerized by, you know, what they're bringing to the table. And I mean, maybe that even comes across a bit in, I guess some of the wins you've got up against opponents who are, I guess, kind of diverse stylistically. Like for instance, like a guy like Stevie Ray, who, 
is an accomplished submission player in many regards. Like you got the victory there and then Clay Collard, a guy who has like that differing approach where it's like more boxing centric and pressure heavy, but still another instance where, you know, you're making it work and you're getting the victory. Like, is that, I guess, adaptability and I guess just like that approach you outlined there, like, is that what kind of leads you to generating these performances you think or um absolutely i think um i think not seeing my opponents as a grandiose you know mindset that has a lot to do i think a lot of people a lot of fighters quit before they even get into the cage um when i step in there i completely clean myself off i forget who i am i forget who my opponent is and i just fight as it is you know so i try not to think too much of myself and i try not to think too much of my opponent so I really come with a very cool headed and neutral position. And then um, I let my skills take over, you know, and now it comes down to who's been prepared the best. And for me, preparation has a lot to do. Um, when I'm training, my training camps are very intense. I go through the ringer, like like they say, you know, I, I push myself till the end. Um, I cut no corners. I take care of myself. I take care of my diet. But you're constantly learning. You know, you're making mistakes as you're going, and you're learning every single training camp. And that's the part of uh, experience, which I love. And like you said, you know, somewhere like in the PFL, and that's one. Of, well, that's why it was one of the reasons why I wanted to take a step back. Is uh, there is so many different styles that um, every fight is a brand new fight. You know, like you could be the best grappler. But then the next fight, you fight against the best striker. And then the fight after that, you fight against the best grappler and striker, you know? So it all comes down to styles. And in the PFL, you always have the best of the best when it comes down to time-wise. Like, there's a lot of veterans, and they're all really good at what they do. And um, I think a lot of my success just came down from uh, the mindset, to be honest. I never quit it on myself. I never quit it in a fight. I always push through. And that mindset comes through challenging myself every single day. Since I wake up, you know, I make sure I have my day planned out and I have challenges to overcome every single day, which all of a sudden that builds into a lot of confidence and that confidence translates into the performance that I create. Yeah, and something that I really appreciate about you and that I do see come across in a lot of different fighters, really, like there's this certain i guess connectivity with some opponents after the fact like just that certain i guess appreciation it would seem like like i feel like that was the case with you and tom theo Karras from the amateur days and i feel like in doing my research i had seen a picture of you with olivier oban mercier who you fought in the 2022 playoffs and stuff like that and he obviously went on to hold championship accolades within the PFL. So just kind of cool to see that sort of component to it as well. Just that respect among martial artists and stuff like that. Absolutely. I mean, like I said before, you know, uh, in the end of the day, I'm very thankful of all my opponents. Um, without them, I cannot be there. You know, without them, I cannot perform. I cannot do what I enjoy. So there is that part where I'm really thankful of. Now, at the same time, I'm trying to take their head off. So... <laughs> In a good way, right? Like it's not a personal thing. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure if we were both outside and something, you know, they get threatened by somebody else, I would definitely step in there to help them out. But in the case, you know, it's uh, we both are we both signed up to do something, you know. And uh, like I say, it's not a personal thing for me. For me, it's a competition thing. Um, he's there to test me, and I really always hope they bring the best of their game, so I can really test myself and elevate myself as a martial artist. I guess that's the point of view that I bring. It's more of a martial artist point of view, you know, a point of view where I'm trying to better myself by doing this competition. And um, it's more of a warrior mindset, you know, like I need him to be at his best. So then there is no excuses. That's why I don't understand when fighters have excuses after their fights. I know we all go through crap before our training camps, but um, I just don't understand how they can have an excuse after a fight. You know, I mean, we all come with a problem of, that we all are facing something before getting to the cage. And um, I never came after a loss and told them what I was facing. I would tell you the facts face to face, but I will never go on social media to tell them, oh, I lost because of this. Oh, I lost because of that. This is what happened. I tried to take it as a man because we both signed that dotted line. We knew what day we had to show up and at what weight we had to be. And then when it's time to perform, we both performed to the best of our abilities in that moment. So to be honest, I'm very thankful to all my opponents, uh, future and past. 
And um, that's all I can say. You know, for me, it's more of a challenge. Yeah, and you certainly embrace all of these different challenges head on. And I guess one of the aspects that I would find interesting, just being that you're coming out of the PFL run and now fighting on a different circuit, just now under that CFFC banner, like obviously PFL doesn't mm -hmm. allow for the elbows within their regular season structure. Like, is there a certain level of excitement? To, I mean, not that you would, I guess, consciously try to like force an elbow technique, but is there a certain something to the fact that you're able to do that? Like it's a viable technique that's now kind of back Absolutely. on the table. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we've seen it before. My toughest uh, matches were against high level wrestlers. And something that I used to do a lot against high level wrestler was, you know, I tie them up and start throwing elbows. That's how I stop a lot of their stuff. You know, if we got backed up into a corner or I got stuck in a sp in a position, I used to use my elbows a lot to get out of those bad spots. So now to be able to have elbows again, I think it's a, it's a big blessing for me, to be honest. You know, it's something that I'm very thankful of. Um, the PFL format in that sense, you know, it was cutting a little bit off my game just because I wasn't allowed to throw elbows. I use elbows a lot against against high-level wrestlers because, you know, high, all high-level wrestlers want to do is uh, get a nice grip around your body, keep you against the cage, and, you know, just grind you all five minutes for 15 minutes if possible. They don't care whether they finish you or not. Like, that seems to be one of their main tactical uh, strategies. So... For me to have elbows, it definitely makes things a lot better. You know, before they even get to me, I can throw an elbow in between. Um, when they get to me and they're stuck to me, now I can start throwing elbows just to get back up or to create some space. And to be honest, it is, uh, it's a tool that I've been missing for quite a while. That's why I think there's a reason why I want to go into somewhere like the UFC instead of uh, getting back into the, into the PFL. It's just because when it comes down to the weapons that I can use, I think the UFC offers more varieties for me to finish the fight, which is something that I, I'm very, very much looking forward to, to throw some elbows. Yeah, and I guess speaking of elbows and then tying in the TriStar element, I was talking to Eamon yeah, yeah. as a hobby <laughs> recently because he's fighting on that UFC Edmonton card and kind of interesting that this is be the first UFC event that uses those newly amended unified MMA rules where you can use like the 12 to 6 elbows and there's like the differences in what a grounded opponent is and stuff like that. And yeah, it's kind of interesting because like some fighters that I've talked to, they're like, ah, I mean, I don't know how many 12 to six elbows you'd be able to, I don't know, I guess really land in like a certain like high level MMA fight. But Eamon seemed like he almost saw it as like a, a game changer sort of thing. Like you can really get 12 to six elbows off in some unique positions and it just adds, I guess, like a new dimension to it. Like, I guess, what are your thoughts on, all of that like obviously it wouldn't be a thing for your fight coming up here but just going ahead in the future for the sport i guess i'll be honest to you you know the less rules we have the better it is for fighters just because you become more free you know like um you don't have to think too much you know you just perform and uh, whatever is allowed is allowed but as soon as you have too many rules that you're not allowed to do then you kind of have to like how you say start thinking a little bit more when you're in the cage you know um big thing was when i was an amateur I remember uh, some amateur places were they were allowing knees, some other places were not allowing knees to the face or to the body. Um, and just adjusting to those rules were a bit hard sometimes. You know, you get the guy in a position where you can take advantage of, and you have to constantly remind yourself: don't knee, don't knee, don't throw your uh, knee to the face or to the body. You know, where other places you could do that. And uh, I just remember just those few milliseconds that you were thinking of. Uh, stopping yourself from doing something already kind of stops the flow. And I remember thinking, oh, I should throw an E. Wait, am I allowed to throw an E? So you, you're like doubting yourself while you're fighting through these things. And even though the 12 to 6 elbow might not be landed as much, just that freedom in, you know, in throwing an elbow without worrying, what, you know, oh, is my elbow the right way? Should I tilt it a little bit more? That will just change the whole dynamic of fighting, I think. I think people will be throwing elbows a lot more just because now they don't have to worry what angle their elbow is going they're just gonna throw it it might be 12 to 6 or it might be i don't know like uh, uh in a different angle but just knowing that uh, they won't get called out from 12 to 6 they will just be throwing more elbows naturally that's what i believe i think it brings more freedom to fighters and they won't be overthinking 
is this a 12 to 6 or is it you know one inch like to a little more diagonal so i don't know if you understand what i'm trying to say here but just pretty much yeah, yeah. Uh, having the Having the freedom of just say, okay, well, 12 to 6 is allowed, so it doesn't matter how I position my elbow, I can just throw it from up to down, no problem. I think just to have that mindset will change completely the dynamic of fighting, and people will be throwing elbows in a lot more, in a little more of an uncomfortable position, so which is a, it's a good thing. Yeah, for sure. It'd just be an interesting thing to see. It seemed like such an archaic rule like it's like people are throwing elbows from a very similar angles anyway like just slightly off to yeah. kind of stay within Absolutely. the rules for sure but yeah. and that's what i mean and that's what i mean by it right i mean guys are still throwing the elbow and then while they're throwing you know the even the referee is questioning it is like is that was that 12 to 6 or no and they stopped the fight for no reason and yeah. uh even yeah. though you know you can go in the replay and it's just a little bit slightly off oh that's allowed okay we can keep going kind of thing so it really just makes uh, uh, the whole fluidity of the fight stop just for no reason. And as well as fighters, you know, they throw a 12 to 6 and the fighter on the bottom, you know, oh, that was a 12 to 6. And it's like, it stops the dynamic of it. Where now you say, okay, 12 to 6 is allowed. And even the guy on the bottom defending will know that uh, he needs to get out of that as soon as possible because, uh, you know, he cannot use the rule. Oh, it's 12 to 6, you know. It's um, how you say now, every, it doesn't matter for where it comes from. As long, as long as it comes from the sky to the ground, it's allowed. So you have it in your head. Okay, he can hit me here from the sky to the ground. Doesn't matter what angle it is. Same thing, I can hit him from the sky to the ground. Doesn't matter what angle it is. And I think it's a good thing. Uh, like I said, it will bring a lot more fluidity to the fight game. Yeah, very much agree, man, for sure. It's been great and uh, have you on and talk to you, though. Like I said, it's kind of been a little bit since you've had a a fight lined up and glad you could finally get something lined up. It seems like kind of a frustrating Absolutely. timeline from what you were talking about, but yeah, no, all steam ahead heading into CFFC 137, man. But I figured I'd kind of give you the floor in case there was a final thought you wanted to add as we're wrapping up here. I do appreciate you uh, coming on and talking, Alex. Uh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. And uh, there's so much to say. Uh, like I said, I'm staying a bit reserved before the fight. Um, I wasn't even planning to do any interviews, but then you... Because it was you, I was like, okay, you know what? He's been around for a long time. He's been uh, always asking me for an interview. I would not say no to him. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I just been staying reserved, you know, like um, I haven't even been posting much on social media. I've been staying reserved, uh, focusing on my game. And all I can say is I'm very excited to be there next Friday. I have so many things to show up, which the way that I believe things will go, I don't think I'll even have the chance to show them all off. Because I think I'm coming for the finish. So, but at the same time, I have so much to show. I've been so excited to show it off. And um, to be honest, this is probably the first time I could say I'm very excited to get back in there. You know, most of the time I feel a lot of pressure. But this time I feel like a, a sense of um, gratefulness to get back in there. You know, just, just to be able to fight, so many things needs to line up. That's something that never happened to me before. You know, always, I always had fights whenever I wanted to fight. So I'm just really grateful to be able to have the opportunity to fight next week. And all I can say is I'm coming for this guy. I'm coming for this guy. I'm hungry. I'm ready to go. Everything, so everything is on track. And um, I can't wait. So October 18th. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great, man. I'm stoked to check it out and whatnot. And yeah, again, to reiterate, thanks so much for coming on the MMA Canada platform. I think you'll have a lot of skills to show off here in this one. And just, yeah, great to see you back in the fold in the sport, man. Hopefully you can arrange something in the future, too, to chat whenever your you know subsequent fight is. But, no, super happy Absolutely. we can make this work now, man. Absolutely, man. Thank you very much. Thank you for always doing this for the fighters. You know, this helps a lot. I don't think you realize it. And I've never been out of the sport. Huh? I've just been very quiet. I've been working really hard on my own here with my coaches. I've just been very quiet. That's all it has been. But uh, I've never been out of the sport. I've been pursuing the sport since the last time you saw me in the case till now. I've been on the gym, never a day off. Um, I'm just one of those guys who enjoys to train. You know, it's my lifestyle. But I've never been out of the sport. I've just been so quiet, not posting. And uh, a lot of things happen in between that. But at the same time, you know, I've always been training and getting ready for this fight, which is finally happening next week. So thank you, Dylan. I appreciate it, bro. 
Yeah, no, I definitely got that sense too, which is why I was excited when this bout offer or the bout announcement rather was kind of put out there. So yeah, super exciting stuff, man. I'll certainly be tuned in. But until then, man, you have a good rest of your night and thank you for the time. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it.